Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church of Tulsa, Oklahoma. My name is Minu Kim. I am one of the pastors of this wonderful church. And I am really happy and glad you to come with us this morning and join with us. And look at this wonderful day. We have white snow day. And I hope from this gift, your year of 2021 have lots of hope and gift from God. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all this day. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our Almighty God as we receive this morning's prelude. Please join with me, call to worship this morning. See, already more light shines in the darkness, even the days are longer. We can see it in the faces of people everywhere as they look toward the new year. Young and old alike feel ready to move on with their lives.
Please join with us. Call to confession and silent prayer. God of glory, you sent Jesus among us as the light of the world to reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and pride hide the brightness of your light. We turn away from the poor. We ignore cries for justice. We do not strive for peace. In your mercy, cleanse us of our sin and baptize us once again with your spirit that forgiven and renewed, we may show forth your glory shining in the face of Jesus Christ. The assurance of God's pardon. Christ Jesus has come with grace and mercy. Christ walks with us even now. In Christ we are all forgiven. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. And also with you. Uh, are we going to say it together? That's okay. okay. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. And also with you.
Reading from Old Testament of this week is Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 to 14. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise a shout for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest part of the earth, among them the blind and the lamb, those with child and those in labor together, a great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by a brook of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Says, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the highest of giants, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance. The young men and the world shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priest their fill of fairness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Scripture reading today is from the Gospel according to John, uh, chapter 1. We're reading the first five verses and then verses nine and following. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him? was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the Father's own Son, full of grace and truth. Now John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He comes after me. He ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. 
Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1. Thanks be to God. Christmas Day can be a very chaotic time, particularly if you have little children. The, the kids get up even before the parents on Christmas Day and run into the room and get around the Christmas tree and start ripping paper off presents and, and, and create all kinds of chaos. And in our family, as we were beginning uh, starting a family and as the kids came along, we decided to maintain a tradition that was actually from my wife's family. As everyone gathered around the Christmas tree on Christmas Day, the father would give a present out to one of the children, and we would all watch as they opened the present and looked at it and showed it off to everyone. And, and only once that had happened did the father give a second child a present, and they would open theirs and, and go on. It, it was kind of delayed gratification, right? Uh, it required patience. It required waiting. And, and I thought it was a good, it was a good pattern, and, and we continued that. We, we still do that. We, we take turns so that we can all enjoy each other and, and enjoy the, the process of opening the presents. But you know, that doesn't really represent our society very well. We, we are in such a hurry. You know, Christmas Day is over, the tree has to come down, the lights have to be put up, everything goes back to, quote, normal. Actually, Christmas Day is to be the beginning of the celebration of Christmas. And it should go on for 12 days to Epiphany, the, the coming of the wise men. If you thought about we have 50 days between Easter and Pentecost. We only have 12 days for the season of Christmas. And we can't even use up those 12 days. We, we want to move on. We're, we're through with that. Marge Carpenter, uh, years ago, was a, uh, a dedicated advocate in the Southern Presbyterian Church for world missions. And uh, she told a story one time of uh, her son's Sunday school teacher coming to her and saying, you know, your son, Jim Bob, obviously she was Southern with a name like Jim Bob. You know, your son, Jim Bob, uh, mentioned today that, that you would take Jesus out for Christmas. And, and then after Christmas was over, you would put Jesus back on the shelf in the hall closet till next year. I wonder if we're not that way. Take Jesus out for Christmas and, and, and as soon as the festivities are over, put him back up on the, the shelf for another year. We can do without the stories of the shepherds and the wise men and the angels and, and all of that if we remember the good news of Christmas that is not for 12 days, but for a full year. Emmanuel, God himself, is with us. God is with us. In the midst of this pandemic, which is still not any way near over, God is with us. In the midst of the economic problems that so many people are having, God is with us in the midst of the political uncertainties that <clears throat> we still hear about. 
God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. The Gospel of John doesn't talk about shepherds and wise men and, and mangers or any of that. But John very much proclaims the good news that God is with us. John begins, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then he goes on in verse 14 to say, And the Word became flesh, human, and dwelt among us. Eugene Peterson has a very popular translation of the Bible, a paraphrase really, uh, called The Message. And here he says, The Word became human and moved into our neighborhood. The Word became human in Jesus Christ and, and is with us even now, even now. Surely John wants us to hear this tremendous good news that God in Jesus Christ is with us even today, even today. The Word, Jesus Christ, came into the world to bring light Light to everyone. Most religions and, and most cultures have a sense of the importance of light. Uh, we can't live without the light. Through sermons through all of this time, I've, I've, I've tried to grapple for ways of speaking about the darkness that we're in. I, I mentioned one time going down the hall at my house in the dark and tripping over a vacuum cleaner. I mentioned one time uh, driving in South Louisiana in, in that heavy, awful fog later at night. We, we have a sense of being in the dark. And in Jesus Christ, we come to the light. We come to be enlightened because we come to know that in Jesus Christ, we can know God. And to know God is to know that we are children of God, according to John, and therefore we are heirs of the promise of life, life eternal in Jesus Christ. The Word brings light, and the light brings life. But we know what happens if we don't have life or don't have light. Back in 1816, there was a year without summer. There was a volcano that erupted in Indonesia in 1815, and it spewed for the longest time uh, volcanic ash and sulfuric uh, fumes that, that went all over the world and they filtered out the sun's rays so that crops failed, people starved, hungry people were susceptible to more illnesses. It was a year without summer, a year without crops in many parts of the world. So when the light fails, life is at risk. But John wants us to see that in the Word, we know the light. We are enlightened by God, and we come to have life abundant and eternal as well. But you know, there is a, a, a dark side to these verses because it says that God was coming into the world in Jesus Christ, but not everyone welcomed him. Not everyone accepted God in Jesus Christ. 
the word became human and moved into the neighborhood. But it's as if people were saying, we don't want you living in our neighborhood. Why would that be when, when Jesus is bringing life to people? Sometimes we would prefer to live in the dark. When we lived in South Louisiana, one of the constant problems in that semi-tropical area was, was roaches. You could get up in the middle of the night and go into the kitchen and no matter how carefully you cleaned up, no matter how carefully you sprayed, there would be roaches out. And when the lights came on, they scurried around to hide. We are like that when we don't want to face God. We, we want to hide in the dark. And so people don't want God in Jesus Christ <clears throat> moving into our neighborhood. We don't want that. We would prefer to live in the dark. About a month ago, there was a story, uh, first of all, in the Arkansas newspapers about <clears throat> uh, a, a family in North Little Rock. They had lived in that neighborhood for, I think, three or four years, and each year they had put up a big inflated, inflatable Santa Claus. Now, I, I got to admit, I'm not all that fond of inflatables, and I'm not all that fond, actually, of Santa Claus. I think sometimes that detracts from the good news in Jesus Christ, but it was a big inflatable Santa Claus, and the family was black, and the Santa Claus was black. The family received a letter, supposedly from Santa Claus, anonymously. It said this, Please remove your Negro Santa Claus yard decoration. You should not try to deceive children into believing that I am a Negro. I am Caucasian, white man to you and have been for 600 years. Your being jealous of my race is no excuse for your dishonesty. Besides that, you are making yourself the laughing stock of the neighborhood. Obviously, your values are not that of the Lakewood area. Maybe you should move to a neighborhood out east with the rest of your racist kind. Yours truly, Santa Claus. Somehow, I don't think Santa Claus wrote this letter. The family that lived there thought perhaps they had made a mistake moving into what was basically a white neighborhood a few years ago. And something was posted on Facebook about this letter. And, and here is the interesting part of this story. White neighbors heard about this. And before long, there were black inflatable Santa Clauses all over the neighborhood. At the time I read this, there were 14 Santa Clauses all over the place as white neighbors came in support of their neighbor. And the family said that it, the story went national, so they started receiving contributions from all over the country. Uh, People would give them money to buy a black Santa Claus. It turns out they were in short supply. And this family said, we're not trying to make a big thing of this. We're not trying to, to push this in anybody's faces. Uh, our one Santa Claus is fine. So they decided to take all that money that was donated and give it to the Ronald McDonald House, which is a place that... Uh, takes care of families when children are in the hospital. They said that I think they had over a year's worth of donations for the Ronald McDonald House. 
in the midst of that racism, there was a sign of grace. This person, who I suppose lives in that neighborhood, had every bit as much right to live there as anyone else. But this family with their black Santa Claus had moved into the neighborhood and had been accepted in the neighborhood. It's not the same. A black Santa Claus is definitely not Jesus Christ. But this story is about God being with us and us welcoming God in Jesus Christ into the neighborhood, into our lives, into the lives of others as well as, as we seek to point to God, to point to God's love, to point to God's grace at work. The Word became human in Jesus Christ, moved into the neighborhood so that we can have light and life and know that God is love in Jesus Christ. Amen. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, as we have celebrated the coming of Christ into the world and into our neighborhoods and into our lives, so we pray this day, O oh Lord, that the world may come to know your grace as we have come to know Jesus Christ that the world may be reconciled to you, that we live together in your love. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
This is the joyful feast of the people of God. According to the Gospel of Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples in Emmaus, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and their eyes were opened. They recognized the Lord. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all those who trust him to share in this feast that he has prepared for all of his people. The opportunity to eat and drink with Christ is not a right bestowed upon the worthy, but a privilege given to the undeserving who come in faith, repentance, and love. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator of the universe. You formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and to serve you, and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you, refusing to trust and obey you, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way. Then, in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the faithful of every time and place, who say to the glory of your name, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Thank you for Jesus, for his teaching and healing, for his challenging and feeding, for his living and dying and rising, that we might be raised with him and all the world made new. We thank you that on the night before he died, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and shared it with his friends. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and wine, gifts of the good earth, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice dedicated to your service, for great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your gathered people and on these gifts, bread and wine of earth, to body and blood of heaven, our frail flesh and blood to your holy people, that we might be Christ's body to your world. For this world we now pray, aid our response to the global pandemic, heal the gap of social isolation, steer us through social disputes, Help us respond to natural and man-made disasters. End all war. Mend your wounded earth. Heal those who suffer. Comfort those who mourn. And infuse us with your peace that is rooted in what is just. Through the power of your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with one another as we work and wait in hope, confident in that day when Christ will come to make all things well and we will feast together at his heavenly table. All glory and honor are yours, holy God, through Christ and in the unity of the Spirit, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. As Jesus taught his disciples, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. Listen now to words of institution of the Lord's Supper from the Apostle Paul. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Apostle Paul says that every time that we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's saving death until he comes again. As our Lord Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and said, take and eat, this is for you. And then after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for many for the remission of sin. All of you drink of it. As often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we are proclaiming Christ's saving death until he comes again. same way after supper he took the cup and said all of you drink of it Let us bow together in prayer. Gracious, abundant God, as we wait for the fulfillment of your desires for your creation, even now, at this table in this meal, you have met us in Christ Jesus. We thank you for feeding us with the bread of life, quenching our thirst with the cup of salvation. As we have been nourished and strengthened here, send us out into the world by the power of your Holy Spirit to share your life and salvation with all whom we meet. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
The second Sunday of Christmas season is almost to the end of the season. But as we have been saying, Emmanuel, God with us, is good news throughout the year. And particularly in these very difficult times, we remember God is with us. The Word became flesh and, and moved into our neighborhood. And we are called to open ourselves to the Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord, the love of God, communion, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each one of us and all of us together this day and every day. Amen. <music>